Welcome to Jean and Mike do the New York Times crossword. Hi, I'm Jean. And I'm Mike. And today we are doing the crossword for Tuesday, May 21st, 2024. So, did you do the crossword? I did. And did it leave you with a feeling of contentment, joy, elation, something like that? Mm, it was a pretty typical Tuesday. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> I am always happy when I get the happy music, mm -hmm. so I guess in a way, yes. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. But uh, it wasn't the end all and be all of my day. Right. So <laughs> I had a lot of good things happen. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm, but yeah, this was one of them. Yep. Mm -hmm. I thought it was a good crossword. I thought it had a, an amusing, cute-ish theme. Yes, it did. It did. Uh, there were four themed clues that were totally unrelated. They were... Um, um, multi-word answers and uh, the first one was 17 across fruit also known no I'm sorry that's 27 17 across cheat sheets were crib notes right uh, 27 across fruit also known as a calabash was a bottle gourd and then 38 across outbuilding for many a historic home was carriage house and finally counterpart to a landline was mobile phone. Mm -hmm. And the revealer clue was 63 across, make safer in a way, or what the starts of the theme clues might be. And the answer to that, of course, was baby proof. And if you look at the starts of the theme clues, we have crib, bottle, carriage, and mobile. Yep. So all of those should be baby proofed. Yes. So, yep, that's the theme. Mm-hmm. Not doesn't take too long to explain, Short I guess. And sweet. Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. Right to the point. <laughs> I um, was fascinated by that twenty-seven across fruit, also known as calabash. Yes. Uh, bottle gourd. Mm -hmm. I guess I'd never heard of a bottle gourd before. I had never heard of it called a bottle gourd. I, I've heard of a calabash, but I'm betting it looks like a bottle. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm sort of envisioning a Diet Coke here, but <laughs> it might be any of. No, not quite like uh, that. Mm -hmm. But but yeah. Interesting. And 17 across cheat sheets crib notes. That sounds sort of vaguely British. I don't know why. But crib notes? Yeah. No, no, no? I think you're we used use to that? it in this country too. Okay. Uh -huh. um, how about 38 across the outbuilding out for many a historic home, carriage house? Yes. So that's where you would store your carriage. Yeah. Which and would be towed by your horses? That's correct. Okay. Yes. Mm hmm. Glad we got that straight. Uh huh. I wonder how many people have a landline anymore. Oh, I think a fair number. That's got to be a, a declining business. Though. Well, probably yes, but uh, it's just the idea of having to run to where the phone is. Uh huh. Yeah, <laughs> and, and think to yourself, I'm talking to the wall, <laughs> or I'm talking at you know to the desk. If it's a if it's a desk phone. <laughs> and then when you leave, you couldn't take it with you. No. I guess you could have your bag phone or your car phone. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I do have to admit, I have a landline where I work, but it is a um, cordless landline. Okay, so. so I can walk through the building holding the phone. So, mm -hmm. yeah, if I need to. Mm -hmm. um, six down happening in modern parlance was lit. Lit, yep. Somehow, the, the, you know, lit is past tense. Happening is present tense. At least it suggested. I know it didn't didn't make sense to me either. You're right. Mm -hmm. Oh, this modern parlance. <laughs> Bring back the landline. That's what I say. <laughs> and eight down. Uh, old car make name for Henry Ford's son Edsel. That's right. So rule one of business. They teach you this in in MBA school day one. Do not name any <laughs> anything that you sell after any of your relatives. You right. will live to regret it. <laughs> oh. I had a little trouble with 19 across, post-panel sesh, and I got all the letters, and it was Qanda. <laughs> that famous, that famous uh, African, <laughs> African country uh, uh, popularized by Marvel? Qanda. But anyway, it was Q and A. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had, the, you know, I had the Q and I had the A, and I'm like, this is not going to end well. Right, no. Uh -huh. But in the same way with 43 across. Millennial successor informally, 
I said, it's a ginger. <laughs> <laughs> it was a Gen Zer. So, yeah, the old ginger. Right. <laughs> Yeah, but Q&A in particular, I was, I was having doubts about. Although nine down, a bra on a lawyer's business card, ESC for Esquire, certainly makes sense. And highly rated as a bond. I mean, what else could it be but triple A? Right. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. and then we had next to it, um, possibly a sat word, um, uh, iniquitous, sinful. That's right. So, I, not I, not that I'm in favor of iniquity, but I do like the word iniquitous. Iniquitous, yes. Um, let's see here. 18 down, noggins. And the answer was knobs. That's right. And I was thinking of, there's a British term, I think it's boffins. And I was, I don't know. Bodkins? If it, no, no. Boff, well, actually, bodkins might be, but boffins. Sort of like like smart people. Oh, in in I've British in British that. parlance, yes, hmm. but so they must have the boffins must have large knobs. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you can't get any more British than that. That's right. Um, let's see, thirty-five across target as a wide receiver was passed to. Mm-hmm. I just think of targeting as sort of aiming. You know, once you're throwing it at them, you're beyond targeting. Mm-hmm. But I, I guess I'm just nitpicking here. Yes, you are. And I'm going to stop doing that immediately. <laughs> 15 across, I actually had trouble with. Uh, often discarded part of a fruit. So I went first for stem, then mm-hmm. I went for core, then I went for eventually the right answer, which is rind. Uh huh. But then you had all those words when you got to 69 across. Often discarded part of a fruit. Yes. And there it was, stem. Yep, the, the, the clue was repeated. Mm-hmm. Too bad they didn't get it like one more time. <laughs> stem, core, and rind. Uh huh. <laughs> uh let's see here um so for me the last my last word was 48 down classic video game with the catchphrase he's on fire and it was nba jam right and i i filled in the crossword didn't get it to solve and i came across nba gam and i'm like oh. that looks very suspicious because 60 across indian royals was rajas that's right and i spelled it with a g Ragas. Uh, ragas, yes. <laughs> I panicked. So, but anyways, uh, this was a nice crossword by Zachary David Levy. Yep. His seventh. Mm-hmm. I was lucky, say, we've seen him before. Lucky seven. Mm-hmm. And it is Tuesday, so even though we finished the crossword, I think it's now time for Triplet Tuesday. Do, 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 do. And that is where listeners, especially new listeners, one of us reads three clues in decreasing order of difficulty to the other. The answer to all three clues is one three-letter answer. The object is to guess that answer in as few tries as possible. We do this three times, hence the name Triplet Tuesday. And I believe today you will be answer- asking the questions. Yep. Okay, good. Otherwise, this is going to be a shorter podcast than usual. <laughs> so I am more or less ready all right, here's your first clue. Dapper guy. Fop, F-O-P. No. Oh, it has to be fop. Nope, it is not. I, I'm calling for the judge. Okay, I, I'm surprised. I'm very surprised it's not fop. <laughs> All right. Ackroyd of Ghostbusters. Dan. Right. Dan, fancy Dan. No, Dapper Dan. Dapper Dan, okay. Uh-huh. All right. <laughs> so... And the third one was former Veep Quail. Okay. Would you have known that? Dan Quail? Yeah, those last two were too easy. Yeah, those were, Dan Quail is like emblazoned on my eyelids. <laughs> when I blink, I see Dan in one eye and Quail in the other. No kidding. Yeah. Wow. That's what the media What's can do. What's that say about you? <laughs> it, it's that I've got a very good memory for Dan Quail. And Dan Aykroyd. I wonder how uh, he's doing. You don't hear very much about Dan Quayle well, anymore. you know, I mean, he was instrumental in getting Pence to do the right thing. and you know, Dan Quayle? Yeah. That Pence, you know, he was like, what should I do? And so we called a vice president that had to do what he had to do. Huh. You know, but he, he, he had to count the votes that showed that he lost when he was the vice president with George Bush. Huh. But he must be 150 years old now. Well, I think he is in his 80s. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, That's he's, not he's quite as old. bad. Okay. But yeah, uh-huh. All right. So so he was in the news there. Um, well, of course, that was four years ago already. So. Right. Wow. 
Time flies. Yep. Okay, here's the next one. Ready. Quiet. Quiet. Okay, it's not din because a din is the opposite of quiet. And it could be it could be sh s h h quiet. Sh s h h. No. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think that was right. <laughs> I think there's some other word that describes quiet. Yes, there and is. And I'm hoping to pick it up in the next... And it's three letters. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Well, so is sh, uh-huh, the way yeah. I spell it. <laughs> I just stop when I'm out of squares. Uh, okay. Here's the next clue. Ready? Mother's flower. M- Mother's flower. Mother's flower. Yes. I think that's usually like an iris or a daisy. Of course, mother's flower. Mother's flower. It could be F L O U R. Okay, what sort of <laughs> flower would mother use? Oat. Now, now you're stereotyping like all mothers bake. I don't know. <laughs> I'm desperate. Okay, uh-huh. oat. Okay. <laughs> You'll laugh at the third clue. Uh, I hope so. <laughs> Shh. It's the word. Shh. It's the word? Shh. It's the word. Um. No idea. Really? No. Nope. <laughs> I thought you'd get it on that. Mum. Mum's oh. the word. Okay. Mother's flower. Mum. I mean, you're the one who says mum instead of mom. So I thought, oh, he'll get it on that. Nope. But, all right. Well, okay. Well, here is your last set of clues. Well, no pressure because I've already lost. <laughs> the first one, unpolished. Raw. That's right. You got it on the first one. I thought that would be really hard. But yeah. The second one was like most vegetables on a salad bar, and the third one uncooked. So, okay. Anyway. All right. Well, well, you're two for three. Two for three. All right. Well, that is it for today, then. So, thanks everyone for listening. Hope you enjoyed this podcast. Hope you did well on Triplet Tuesday. Let us know how you did. Crossword podcast at iCloud.com. We will be back again with our cutting edge analysis of tomorrow's crossword tomorrow. Bye bye.